Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by one important quotation. Throughout the centuries, the history of Ukraine has revealed the turning points in the history of Europe. These words belong to Dr. Timothy Snyder. And he added, Ukraine has no future without Europe, but Europe also has no future without Ukraine. One week ago, Dr. Snyder, together with Leon Wieseltier of the New Republic, organized the outstanding intellectual meeting and conference here in Kiev named Thinking Ukraine, which was held at the Diplomatic Academy of Ukraine. Before the presidential election of 25th of May, and in the process of the ongoing, of ongoing European elections, these words have a sound and profound sense. Ukraine is free and open. We do not pretend. We do not hide from our problems. As a United Nation, we are what we stand and fight for. Dignity, freedom, passion to change life. These words make sense here in Ukraine. More than 2,700 international observers from 19 countries, almost 20 countries, and a number of international organizations will ensure that the presidential elections will pass in a transparent manner and in full compliance with national and international standards. More than 4 100,000 Ukrainian citizens will be able to vote abroad in one of 114 ballot stations. All six districts in Russia, Moscow, Nizhny Novgorod, Rostov-na-Donu, St. Petersburg, Yekaterinburg, Novosibirsk, are fully prepared and voting there will take place as per normal. Under Ukrainian legislation, the elections will be deemed valid even if voting was impossible in a number of districts. The government provided for Ukrainian citizens from temporarily occupied Crimea to vote in any other region of our country. Around 6,000 citizen, Ukrainian citizens from Crimea applied to vote in other regions. Aside from a few electoral districts in Luhansk and Donetsk regions. All preparations are taken in 225 election districts nationwide. There is no doubt that separatists and terrorists have already received their instructions. They will try to derail the election. They are already doing it spreading death and destruction in some towns of Ukraine's east. Yet, the soil under their feet is starting to shake. The people of Donetsk, Luhansk, and other cities that were hit the most by separatism and terrorism realize now that there is only one way back to peaceful life, electing a new president, engaging in the national dialogue, and abstaining from violence. I'm confident that on the 25th of May, Ukrainians will support our European future. The European Union itself is on the eve of the milestone elections to the European Parliament. We hope that unprecedented synergy of our common associate efforts will not be only maintained, but strongly enhance after the, this voting with a new strategic perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, a successful election on 25th of May is point one on the peace agenda. But there are two more points on that agenda as well. Point two is continuing our efforts, our common efforts to fulfill the Geneva Agreement. In particular, proceeding with the national unity dialogue. Roundtables as part of the National Unity Dialogue already have been held in Kyiv, Kharkiv, and Mykolaiv.
in the leadership of the terrorist republics. The ragtag groups, gangs of local misfits inspired and supported by the Kremlin only. The separatists and terrorists are getting increasingly isolated and their time is running up. All polls point to a successful election with a record turnout wherever Ukrainians are allowed to vote. And that will be 90% of the country's territory, aside from the occupied Crimea. A successful election should become a breakthrough for all of us. After these difficult months, Ukraine needs some peace and quiet to fulfill what people so want. space, becoming a better state. Thinking Ukraine, Dr. Snyder said, to become a better state, that's our clear All those who care for Ukraine, international, international principles and standards, will help us in this endeavor. All, and all those who do not are destined to fail. I thank you very much. Unfortunately, I feel quite a lack of time, so two questions and I will be happy to answer them. Sure. Yes, you're welcome. Question from the Los Angeles Times. Are, are the international observers who are here for the election in agreement with the Ukrainian election committee organizers that the alternate polling place set up for people who can't safely vote in their normal home district, that these are in compliance with the international standards for voting that the votes can be validated as, as legal and... That's a specific vote. question. Naturally, that Ukrainian legislation, uh, with all necessary amendments done, uh, provides all our citizens a right to vote at any uh, district, any place, they have a chance to do that. And it, un, being under attack, that's a natural thing for Ukrainian state and government, including the, and also for the Ukrainian Central Election Commission to provide people with such kind of instrument and a, and a, and a way how to express their free vote. That's why, uh, according to uh, Ukrainian standards, that properly correspond to the all necessary international and European standards as well, uh, we, have, uh, we have provided the uh, Central Ele Election Commission have provided them with such a possibility and chance. Uh, let me say that uh, f that was the reason why we clearly stated that our position is transparent and we want as many observers as possible just to have nothing to hide from, that we would like people to see what's going on on the ground to be sure that Ukraine is democracy and rule of law country giving a chance for every Ukrainian citizen to vote and to express its vision of how this country should go ahead. I, I'm sure that that will be a success. For Ukrainians, this participation in voting is the best way how to protect the country. And I call on my compatriots to come and vote in those places that are secure and, that, and those places where this security can be ensured. I thank you. Hello, uh, Georgian Public Broadcasting. Hello, Georgia. Great to see you here. Thank you. Uh, Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shoigu, uh, said that uh, is uh, the age of the civil war. He made the statement. Uh, we Do you follow that, uh, these statements? I, I beg your pardon. Do you still follow these statements? Uh, <laughs> I don't, but <laughs> okay. uh, uh, we see that Russia is to interrupt the election in Ukraine. So how important is the support of Europe and the West for Ukraine right now? It is important, but this is important not only for Ukraine, but for all of us. Because this is not about our country only, but for the whole Europe, but for, the Euro for Europe and for the whole international community. To ensure a principle of international law, fundamental principles of dignity and freedoms here so these principles could be ensured for the future, national future. Uh, getting back to the uh, stance of the Russian Federation, let me say that Russia still remains the only country that does not 
uphold the principles and uh, basic elements of the Geneva Statement of 17. Russia has challenged the uh, all uh, Ukrainian bilateral agreements. Russia continues with efforts to undermine the security in Ukraine. We look forward to see someday a new Russia that will definitely happen after Russia withdraw its troops, after Russia back the Crimea, after Russia clearly say clearly says that this country can and should be the responsible and reliable partner in the international affairs. I do thank you. Yeah, we, we, are, we know this. That's why all our hearts with Georgia as well. Our love is there. Just a that's, very, that's very dangerous developments with regard to all neighbors of Russia. And we are calling Russia to stop this madness because they are creating the corridor of instability uh, around all their borders. Why they, why they are doing that? There is no answer, and no one can answer them that question except the Russian authorities. And we call them to stop the madness they are doing, and we call them to get back to the international principles. But the most important part is that our Ukrainian job should be done, should be done properly. The first step is the presidential elections. I hope that we will succeed with that. But these elections are not the aim. These elections are not the panacea. These elections are not the solution. These elections are the instrument to change this country, to give freedoms and citizens, to uh, strengthen our economy, to get away from insane uh, diseases of corruption and post-Soviet legacy that ruined this country. This nation deserves a better future. So I thank you very much, and I hope that you will follow these elections. Let us all make this a good start for new Ukraine, which actually means that this is real Ukraine. I do thank you. Thank you. Thank you.